The DropSwap solution is an RCAD application with a monitoring web interface. The DropSwap process is fully integrated with the RCAD deployments. The distribution macro calls the DropSwap functions. If so configured, the standard RCAD distribution macro will start and end with the DropSwap replication and synchronization process. The progress of the replication and synchronization can be monitored here on the DropSwap Web Studio. Files under DropSwap pass through two stages of replication and then synchronization. Data from the production files is replicated into the new file formats in the DropSwap temporary library. New format data is kept in synchronization with the production changes via IBM iJournals. The synchronization is maintained until DropSwap stops. DropSwap can be stopped and restarted, such as to perform a system backup. It maintains its last known replication or synchronization within its own memory. When you are ready, you end activity within your application. DropSwap is then stopped by an RCAD macro command, and that macro invokes RCAD to move the new files and other objects into the target libraries. The move happens in seconds. Downtime is eliminated. There is some configuration to do both within your RCAD application and within DropSwap. We won't go over all of it today, but let's take a look at a few key items within DropSwap. First, let's take a look at source connectors. A source connector contains all the information needed to establish the connection to an IBM I server and to provide authentication. Each connector is given a unique name, and then you select the connection type. You'll use SSH if your DropSwap Web Studio is installed on an IBM I. If you use JDBC, activating SSH on your IBM I environment is not required. The LIAS, all features available on DropSwap, command, file system, read, and so on, are executed through the Elias API server. You'll provide a host name or the DNS network name to reach your IBM I and the instance of RCAD to be used by the connection. Any number of connectors can be defined. Let's take a look at the DropSwap process in action. This is an RCAD version seen in the 5250 interface. Of course, we could do this through RDI or VS Code. The application this version is under is configured to use DropSwap. You can see a number of physical files in this version, and some of them are quite large, and we'll use WAP for them. In today's example, we'll start the distribution process from the command line. Of course, there are multiple ways of doing this. The process will first ask where you would like to distribute. It will then display what it's going to distribute. And then it will ask if you'd like to use Drops WAP for the install process. It will then display the list of physical files and tables within your version. Here, you can remove files if they don't need to be part of the Drops WAP process. If needed, DropSwap can also call a conversion program as part of your process. Once everything is set, the macro will ask if you'd like to continue. If you do, you'll submit the distribution using DropSwap. Here, you can see the distribution job running on the IBM I. This is happening on the development machine. It's packaging and sending the components to a production machine. The production machine is receiving the distribution and starting the WAP process. The process will use existing journals if found or create them if needed. Using the DropSwap Studio, you're able to closely monitor the process. On this screen, you can see all the statistics about your WAP deployment. You can see the source file and the target file. You can see the status, the source number of rows, the target number of rows, when the copy started, when the copy ended, the journal that's being used, and so on. If you'd like to monitor things in real time, at the top of the screen, you can click Enable Auto Refresh. So right now, the WAP job is running, monitoring these files. It's copied all the data into the temporary library 
and it's watching for activity on the production files. Let's simulate that. In the real world, people would still be using your application. In our demonstration today, what we'll do is we'll run a few SQL statements against these files to cause some updates. Note the column saying, time the last journal entry was read. Let's run the update and then see what happens to that column. You can see that the journal was read and that the updates that were done on the production files have now been done on the temporary files. They're up to date. This process will continue in the background until you tell Drops WAP that you're ready to move the files. To do that, we'll release the job Receive WAP End. That was submitted on hold as part of the process earlier. It's normally done under the user ArcadNet. You'll see that the job is in message wait state. It's waiting for you to confirm that things are ready. It's asking you to confirm that all users are done using these files. It's also warning you that jobs still using the files will be terminated. When you take a go, it will now allocate the production files. It ends the journaling on the application files. It requests drops to end the replication mode. It checks to see if drops WAP replication has completed, and then it will ask for confirmation to continue after verification of the replication ending. You can see that the drops WAP jobs have ended and it's waiting for you to respond. If you reply yes to this message, drops WAP will now move the files from the WAP temporary library to the target library. It uses the command a transfer object, which is the actual RCAD transfer command. Everything is being done under change management. It will then restart the journaling on the moved files. You can see here that the command is doing a move of these files into production. It's very fast. When the receive WAP end job finishes, your files are in production, converted, and ready for use.